This is a continuation of my previous video where I went house hunting and showed a few of my options as I established myself here in Mexico. And really this video is a continuation of a lot of the content I produce here on my channel. This video is a step in the progress of my life and I wasn't sure if I should share what it means to me or just film this as a reveal of my new home here. I decided that I'd go ahead and share the larger story because really this video isn't just about which house I chose, but it's about what all of this means to me. A few years ago, I was depressed. I was 60 pounds overweight, working a job I didn't enjoy, and in a marriage that I wasn't happy in. I don't want to say that my entire life was miserable because there were a lot of things that I loved and as part of designing my perfect life, I have had to make some sacrifices that to be completely honest, I still miss. The thing is, I actually remember the moment when I was literally looking in the mirror one morning, saw myself and asked my reflection, what the fuck happened to you? I realized and I decided that I had to make some changes, more than just deciding. I made a commitment to myself. I wanted to become the best version of myself and I was gonna work daily on it. That idea, the best version of myself, is something that sounds cliche and it also seemed like an almost impossible task at the time. But I rephrased it. I made a commitment to work on trying to live my life to my full potential. A part of my understanding of this task was realizing that it was okay for me to try and fail, but I was going to try. Whatever my full potential was would be measured by myself and I wasn't going to compete or compare with what others were doing. Making an effort was simply starting small and then raising the bar slightly as I improved. Another important step in my decision was that I wasn't going to allow myself to be negatively influenced by the expectations of anybody else. The only person I'd be accountable to was myself. This is, without question, the most difficult part of the journey, but ultimately I know that each time I have listened to my gut, made the hard decisions, I've moved forward in the right direction. You know, it's almost like there are rewards for raising the bar physically, and there are also rewards for raising the bar with more intrinsic parts of life. It makes sense. I decided that I would focus on my original passions, the things that I've enjoyed my entire life. It was those things that could describe me as a person, who I am, my thoughts, my words, my actions, those things that maybe other people would describe me as. I thought that who I was as a person should be the foundation for designing my perfect life. And the next step in the process would be to incorporate what I believe what I believe, you know, the big picture, the meaning of life, why I'm here. It wasn't easy to think of or create a plan, but I asked myself if neither money nor reputation were restrictions, what would I do with my life? Who would I be? I would live a healthy life. I would be fit and strong. I would speak clearly. I would have good posture. I would be decisive and I would live in a good climate, eat healthy food, and take care of myself because I knew above all else that to live my full potential, I had to ensure that this vehicle was well maintained. I would focus on leading myself and not leading others, just walking my own path and try to do a good job at it. I would work to make the most of life and experience the things that interest me while I still have time here alive and able to experience these things. I would learn. I would learn another language. I would learn about other cultures. I would learn a musical instrument. I started to travel. I traveled in my youth around Canada and the United States and also to Southeast Asia and Australia where I lived for six years. I always enjoyed the adventure of travel and I think it's an important part of my life and who I am. So I started to travel. I traveled out to the east coast of Canada and then here to Mexico. I stayed here for five months and then I went to Spain and walked the Camino de Santiago. I visited Belgium, France, and the UK. I returned to Canada for a few months for some canoe trips and to visit friends and family. And I evaluated what I wanted and continued to work on my own plan. Then I returned here to Mexico where the weather's great, the cost of living is better, and where there's always fresh food at a fraction of the cost that it is in Canada. After more than a year of exploring and evaluating, it's time to create a space for myself to move into the next stage of designing my perfect life. What I was looking for in a place was I wanted to be in a secure area. 
I wanted access to a community gym, I wanted a quiet place, and also that it would be large enough that I could set up a guest room and at least one studio space. I wanted to be relatively close to the kayak club. I wanted a backyard. That was important because at some point I'd like to get a dog, although I'm not ready for that. And also a rooftop terrace was something that I also really like. I chose to rent a house here in a secure, gated community. It's only 15 minutes from the local kayak club and the community has a couple pools and a gym. The house itself is 120 square meters. It has the main floor, where I am, with a full kitchen, a small backyard, three bedrooms, four bathrooms, four bathrooms, as well as a rooftop terrace that if I decide to stay here longer, then I'll put some plants up there and probably a barbecue. But for now, it's a great place to go up and watch the sunrise or a sunset. So this house is definitely big for one person and it has a lot of space for me, but it gives me an extra bedroom for a family or a guest to come to stay and I'm going to turn one of the other bedrooms into a dedicated studio for filming or doing sound recording. Designing my perfect life also meant designing my perfect home and what was important to me was to combine the comforts of home with a highly functional workplace and be able to focus on not only creating video content but also working on the other projects that I have planned. I had a large main floor of the house with space for a dining room but I'm living alone so I don't really need a dining room. Instead I thought I can just get a couple of bar stools and set up a spot at the kitchen peninsula and eat there. Now that I knew that the dining room was free I could use it as a workspace instead and I considered what was the most important elements for my work area to make it functional, comfortable, and maintain some minimalism. So my workspace really only needs a couple things. It needs to be quiet and it needs to have good lighting. And from there, I can build it to suit my needs. The first thing it would need would be a desk. The desk would need to be large enough to hold two computers easily and store a few things. Of course, the desk isn't complete without a good desk chair, and it would need to be comfortable enough for long days of planning, writing, and editing. I would also need a shelf because I always have some clutter that I need to move around, things like notebooks, external hard drives, cameras, and lenses. So extra space near the desk that I can move my small amount of clutter is important. The lights in the ceiling are good, but extra light is better, so a floor lamp would be a good idea. So with the office space planned out, I could then focus on the rest of the space, the living space. And I didn't want to have too much furniture because it's just me here. And I have a few things in storage in Canada that I hope to bring down here to Mexico at some point in the future. Not a lot. And in fact, I would recommend that if you're planning to move to Mexico, you shouldn't bring your furniture at all. But I have a couple pieces that I inherited and they're important to me. For now, what I needed was a sofa something simple that I could sit on or maybe even lay down on at the end of a hard day. Maybe a fold-out that could work as an extra bed if I had a guest. So the walls in the house were completely bare and I think that if I sat in a house all day with bare walls I would probably end up going a little bit loopy. So adding some art I thought would be a good idea. I also wanted to add a cabinet to break up the two living spaces, workspace and living space, and a cabinet would also give me a little bit of storage. With everything planned out, I started to bring in the furniture. The first was the desk. I bought a five-foot desk with three drawers. It would give me enough space I needed to work comfortably and also store everything away. A good desk chair was brought in and I found one that matched the design style of the desk fairly well. I already had my Mac and setting up the workspace was just a matter of placing the computer on the end of the desk closest to the window so that I wouldn't have any light glare from outside and I could sit down and see how it all felt. I wanted to add a little bit more color and life to the room so I thought to get a few plants. I bought a few from a local Vivero that I thought would fit in well with the space. And although I'm not going to show the back garden yet, having a few plants next to me gives a bit of green space depth between the inside of the house and then looking through the window to the outside garden. 
Okay, a quick interruption. I'm not going to show the outside of the house for a simple reason. I am a content creator and have over 60,000 subscribers between my two channels. My videos have been viewed over 10 million times. So even though I like to share what I'm doing in my life, I also need to maintain some privacy and security. I hope you understand. Oh, and if you're not one of those 60,000 subscribers, then please smash on that subscribe button and stay connected with me. Now, back to the video. I added the shelf above the desk, which gives me enough room for that extra storage that I need in my workflow, plus a plant, my little drone, and my focus whiteboard. The floor lamp was also a good addition that adds a bit of form to the room, but more importantly, adds some additional function in the way of extra light near the desk. So moving to this living room, I found a sofa on sale, and it was minimalist and available in gray. I wanted to make it a little more comfortable and add a small amount of color, so I thought pillows would help, and added a couple navy blue pillows to the corners. I also found a cabinet on sale online that matched the simple style that I was going for. It would be great for the little extra storage that I might need, but there was one thing missing. So the next thing was to get some art hung on the wall in the living room. I actually have something in storage that I would like to have here. So I had a piece custom printed on canvas as a temporary solution. Okay, so there was one problem with the space that I had to find a solution for. There was an outlet and a cable in the middle of the wall, which was meant for a TV, but I wasn't going to hang a TV on the wall. After thinking about it for a while, I came up with a solution that I think is okay. So now, for the most part, the main floor and living space is now finished. I picked up a 40-inch smart TV, which is great and helps divide the two sections of the living space. I also brought in my mandolin so it would be in sight and a reminder to practice. And I hung another whiteboard near the kitchen. This one I use for learning Spanish. I find the whiteboard is much better than a notebook for this type of learning and focusing. So I still need to work on setting up my small studio in the spare bedroom room upstairs and I think I'll make a video and show you what I do in there if you're interested. For now this is home. It's a place for me to focus, work and play and more importantly it's a place to keep working on improving. I'm not just designing my home but I'm designing my life. Thanks for watching.